Good afternoon, YouTube. Johnny Jet back here, riding around on a Sunday afternoon. I just got all my honeydews done. Got the lawn mowed. Got a bed put together in one of the spare bedrooms. Did a few other things around the house and kind of lazed around a little bit. Uh, hung out in the backyard, and now I'm out for a ride. It's a nice summer day. Riding out here on the west side of the valley. Kind of an empty uh, part of the valley. There's the copper mine right in front of me. And today I thought I'd just make a real quick one about uh, and give you an update on how I'm doing down there at Honda. So yesterday marked my, uh, my four weeks mark. I've been there um, exactly four weeks selling. Um, I did a couple of other days before that, before I started selling, doing training and getting all of my uh, HR stuff set up, and benefits and whatnot. So yesterday also marked my 20th car sold since I moved. So if you put that together, very first month out, 20 cars, 30 days, uh, not calendar month, but 30 days from the day I started, doing pretty well, doing excellent in fact. Haven't sold uh, 20 cars in a month since last summer, at the last place that I just came from. So I thought I'd just give you an update, let you know uh, things are going very well. I'm loving the new digs, kind of learning the new product pretty well. Honda, great, uh, great quality automobile, just like Subaru was. Uh, I'm gonna like selling Hondas probably just as much as Subaru. A couple other things that go along with that. One of my best friends growing up, we, uh, we met in high school, 10th grade, gym class, volleyball, bowling, flag football, a bunch of stuff like that, and we've been pretty good friends ever since. Um, but after, after high school, we kind of went our separate ways, and, and he got a job. Uh, he worked for, I believe, pilot travel centers which are like those big gas stations. And uh, he started out working for a local gas station and kind of moved up into pilot, uh, pilot travel centers and then ended up moving back east to Ohio. And that's where he's been since, uh, well, we graduated high school in 1987. So we've seen each other maybe half a dozen times over the years since then, but uh, Long story short, he moved back to Utah last year, decided he wanted to come back here and make a change in careers. And the thing that he tried out when he first came back here wasn't working out so well. So about a week ago, he texts me and say, hey, you know, you know of any, uh, any jobs, any careers that I could look into? And I said, hey, why don't you come down here and, and sell Hondas with me? We've got a guy that is, uh, a guy that just barely left like three weeks ago so we've got an opening and it's a good place to work and I can kind of show you the ropes and take you under my wing help you out a bit and so he came down and interviewed and and my managers liked him too and they brought him on and he started this week he's doing all of his Honda training going through all that stuff starting from scratch he's never sold cars but I think he's gonna do well so now, end result uh, of me moving, not only am I doing very well, selling quite a few cars, and better really than I could have hoped for in the first month, but I've also got one of my best friends working with me down there at the dealership. Makes it even nicer. So here we go past the copper mine, my regular Sunday afternoon loop, kind of ride around here on the west side. And this part of, of the Salt Lake Valley is 
still even just a little bit of farming community. You can see the, the farms out there. They grow some winter wheat and alfalfa and other crops and stuff out here right next to the copper mine. There's the employee entrance to the copper mine. Kind of nice that there's some clouds out so it's not so blistering hot. Although it hasn't been as hot the last week or two. It's been pretty tolerable. Kind of perfect for, for July weather. Up there where you see that white car just went. Here, we'll ride up there. Road closed. So I won't go very far, but obviously if it says road closed, but this road actually connects up and over this whole mountain into the Tooele Valley, which is kind of the next, uh, the next valley, the next community over those hills right there. And you wouldn't want to do this on your, on your motorcycle unless you've got an enduro or some kind of uh, dual purpose bike. But this goes all the way up to the top and a lot of it's dirt roads and you can look right down into the copper, copper mine. So that's kind of a cool trip. We won't do it today. Maybe we'll, we'll drive up there in the, with the four wheel drive or something and take a look. Thought I'd show you where the entrance is. So there's the sign right there, Butterfield Canyon, it says no camping, no fires, no off-road vehicles, no trespassing off-road way because this whole mountain is now owned by Rio Tinto. But when I was a kid, and I'm going to turn around here and I'll kind of tell you the story as I go. When I was a kid, there wasn't much out here. The copper mine was a lot smaller back then. and. My dad and I used to come up here um, shooting our rifles and hunting, deer hunting in the fall. Got a, got a few deer up there over the years. This was kind of a second weekend if you're familiar with how the deer hunt works or how it used to work anyway. I haven't deer hunted in years, but how it used to work is the first weekend was opening weekend and we usually take off and go somewhere else, a little more exotic, like down in southern Utah or up in northern Utah where you know some of the bigger quote quote bigger deer would hang out but then if we didn't get anything the opening weekend we'd often uh, come up here right up Butterfield Canyon for the second weekend because it was so close to the house it's probably a 20-25 minute drive from from my parents house they still live in the same place and so we'd come up here and deer hunt but then sometimes in the summer, we'd come up here and have a scout camp. You saw the sign now, you can't camp there anymore, but back then you could. So I just wanted to tell a kind of a funny story about something that happened on one of those scout camps. My dad and I used to, used to sleep in the back of his, uh, in the back of his pickup truck. It had like a camper shell on it and we throw some sleeping bags and some foam mattresses back there and just zonk out in the back of the truck because it was easy we didn't have to set up a tent so on this particular scout camp uh, i think i had to sleep in a tent because i was one of the scouts but my dad brought the truck and he planned on sleeping in the back of the truck and we all get up there with our vehicles and there were probably 20 of us scouts and a few leaders my dad was one of the one of the scout masters back then and we get up there and uh, it's kind of tight quarters for parking spaces and we decide you know we should probably get a fire going another thing on that sign no fires anymore but we should probably gather up some wood and start a campfire so my dad finds this old dead tree and he goes uh, to start chopping it down with it was either with his axe or with a chainsaw, I don't remember, probably an axe, it was a scout camp. Starts chopping away and pretty soon one of the, one of the other scouts, his name also was John, um, with an H. He was my same age and he said, uh, hey Mr. Barney, that's uh, my last name in case you didn't know, hey Mr. Barney, don't you think you ought to move your truck? Um, 
And he's like, oh no, no, this um, the tree's gonna fall the other way. You know, famous last words, and sure enough, he gets the tree. So it's about ready to fall down, and you hear a few cracks, and the tree starts to fall, sure enough, right towards the truck, lands right on top of the camper shell, and puts a big crease in it. And this was probably, you know, a eight to 10 inch thick tree trunk. And it just, it creased the top of the camper shell pretty good. So kind of one of those stories, you know, uh, be careful what you do. Even, even if you think something's gonna go one way, it's better to be uh, cautious err on the side of caution and just uh, go through your safety rigmarole before you do anything, whether it's cutting down a tree or, or hopping on your motorbike and riding around. Don't think that just because something's gone a certain way one time that it's going to go that way every time. Plan, plan for the worst. Hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Hey, look up, uh, look up Johnny Jetpack on YouTube.